Hi, welcome to this follow-up video about the tabletop turbine. I've created a 3D printed electric jet engine model with a bunch of features and which files you can download from now on. First link in the video description if you are interested. This video is going to be about explaining the build and serving you with some assistance for the assembly process. If you are looking for a certain explanation, I've put timestamps in the video description. So the turbine weighs in at about 5 kilograms and consists of about 60 parts. So it's not quite considered a quick afternoon project. If we have a look into the manual, you can get the idea behind the order. Five sections depict you general information, additional parts you might need to purchase, slicer screenshots and settings, an assembly part and further info. Starting with general information, you get an overview about each section. From a constructive point of view, there are four sections in total. I mark the frame as optional. What this means is, basically it's pretty much up to you how you mount the turbine. In theory, you could even glue it to the ceiling and put the control panel on the wall, so feel free to explore options. However, I included the red marked edges in the files so you could rebuild it the way I did it. Concerning the additional parts you have to purchase, I recommend buying sets of screws, since it's less expensive. The printing part consists of screenshots of each part with the corresponding slicer settings on the right, and an overview so you can keep track of where you are. The same goes for the reverse thrust mechanism, cowling and all the other sections. Next we have the assembly. Each colored part is referred to in the description with the same color. So if the word bearing is colored red, it is in the picture as well. If you are colorblind in a way or experience other issues, feel free to contact me at any time. Let's talk about some tips I can give you for the assembly. First we have a look at the shaft. It should be cut to a length of 170 mm. Then the angles I recommend in the manual have three holes which fit to the ones located at the horizontal edges. If you use other ones they must be 30 mm in width max. Step 3 is concerned around the alignment of the midsection with the radial mounts of the front section. This is sounding way more complicated than it actually is. What this means is have a look at this part. This is the midsection and it has to be vertically heading assembled like seen here. Otherwise these radial mounts won't fit. Next let's have a look at the motor mount. The motor is mounted using the bracket that comes within the delivery. It should look like this. The core and the fan housing are fastened using M4 12mm screws being countered with nuts from the inside. Now let's head over to step 8. In order for the turbine to work, the correct wiring is key. The ESC has got a few wires, let's have a brief look into that. The ESC has 4 outputs and 3 inputs. The main power, so the power coming directly from the power supply is led to the ESC by these two cables. Authorized clamps or high quality soldering should be used here. The ESC distributes the power. These three cables are connected to the motor and if we look at the three pin connector, the red and black wires convey the power which the servos and the Arduino use. Lastly, the third wire is a PWM input. It is delivered by the Arduino, so the ESC is told how fast the motor is supposed to run. I hope that this makes sense, if not, feel free to contact me. Okay, so now we discuss the pylon. It is supported by two 250mm thread rods, which you can cut from the same part you did the shaft out of. It is screwed in right here and helps with bending resistance. Next, notice this duct right here. This is meant for the wiring. So all wires coming from or going to the ESC are led through this duct. Main power, PWM, Arduino power, servo power. Okay, let's talk clamps. In the manual I'm talking about a clamp, which distributes 5 volt and ground for the servos. This clamp is mounted right here. As a quick explanation, these are 5 volt and ground from the ESC, which continue right here, running all the way to the Arduino. These right here are 5 volt and ground for the servos. And these two are PWM cables, which run to the second clamp at the rear of this bridge, distributing them to the servos. Okay, so now let's head over to the thrust reverser housing. 
It is secured with the seventh screw right here at the back. Be careful when you screw it in. However, this would probably even work without it. I just like things being secure and pretty much indestructible. <laughs> the power coming from the power supply is delivered via this plug. This corresponding socket is used to take the power. So this is such a socket. Screw the main power cables in here and push the socket into the provided extrusion. To assemble the thrust lever, set the potentiometer to zero. From this perspective, rotate the shaft clockwise until it hits a stop. Now push the thrust lever on it. And take a three millimeter screw. It is screwed into the thrust lever at this position where the little hole is located to fix the shaft. It will push its spike into the shaft, which will then hold both parts in place. Push the screw into the provided area, the connectors leaving into the open space. So from this perspective to the left. The following section deals with Arduino code. If you uploaded the code to the Arduino and it is connected to the turbine, the turbine should make this sound once you plug in the power supply. and start idling as soon as you turn on the switch. If it doesn't and makes other sounds like fast continuous beeping noises, the code has to be modulated. This can be caused by minor production inaccuracies. In this case, open up the code and change this figure. This resembles the base value or idle speed. Start with 25 and increase it by 4 for each upload. The same goes if the turbine starts and the idle speed is too high. So this is the figure to modulate. The servos are placed in this area. Keep in mind that there shouldn't be any tension on the servo. And since the servos are now in a zero degree state, they will later have issues to maintain it when the thrust is deactivated. They are just gonna push against the fan cowl and eventually start melting. So you have to slightly push the reverse thrust to the rear first, but only by a few millimeters, or let's say one to two gear teeth, and then set in the servo and tighten it with a 3mm or 2mm screw. This one is about how to mount the fan cowl and inlet cowl on the fan housing. Basically, they are mounted like a sandwich. The fan cowl is squeezed in between the inlet cowl and the fan housing. Okay, we are almost at the end, step 45. The intake ring is set up with screws being used from the inside, as you can see here. And the last assembly topic I want to cover is the control panel. The thrust lever handle is attached by screwing an M3 screw into the nut, which is pushed in the provided cutout. And now you should be facing your own working tabletop turbine. If you encounter any issues, have questions, or you simply want to get in touch with me, feel free to use the contact information at the end of the manual. Oh, and by the way, the next video is going to be about switching the motor of the tabletop turbine. The current motor has 180 watt. The next one's going to have, I think, 460 watt. Uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty exciting. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a magnificent rest of your day.